We never know when we will take our final journey. I remember a time, it's been many years ago now, but I specifically hearing, remember hearing the whistle blow. The play was over, and yet there we were, a pile of teenage football players meshed together, over a dozen linemen and backs and whatever, meshed together in this pile up. We're pulling each other off the pile, we're getting up, we're rolling off each other, and then it happened, he fell, this 260, 270 pound kid, right on my leg. It broke. It was over. We never know when we will take our final journey. Sometimes it's things like that where adults, we can look back and say, well, okay, but the heartache I felt was real. And yet we can remember other times, like my friend who I worked with at the pool for many years, and she was always the life of the party. She was always fun and exciting to be around, and, and I really enjoyed the friendship I had with her. And then I came into work one morning, and I heard the news, and this joy-filled, bubbly, young personality, the next time I saw her, had tears running down her face because dad stayed back and decided to ride, drive the truck home from the lake and ended up being in an accident. And that was the last time she saw her father alive. We never know when we will take our final journey, and I don't know why this is just hitting me now, but the last time I played with Greg, just a few months ago, we never know when we will be taking our final journey. Today is Good Friday. Jesus knew this would be his final journey. He had accepted the perfect will of our Heavenly Father, and his time had come, and all along, he'd been telling us, he'd been telling the disciples, this is going to happen. It's coming. Just like we're reminded of his words way back in the Gospel of John, just as Moses is lifted up by, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. He must be lifted up. Because healing occurs when we look to these symbols. What an excruciating act of torture. What was intended to be the end ended up being the greatest act of worship and the redemption, the redemption of all time for all mankind. But the, did, did the disciples remember these words? Do we remember these words? The Romans, as we read the passages, they knew something was off, something was wrong. I imagine everyone, even the Pharisees who had condemned him, at least had moments of doubt and concern. We know the disciples were so fearful of joining him upon the cross. Would they, too, have to suffer this fate? Did they have minutes, hours, days, weeks? Do we as Christians today have to accept a similar fate of the darkness this world has to offer? I chose today's scripture today because we hear about a name. We hear about a man, a foreigner from a different country actually from modern-day Libya in North Africa. He had traveled a long way. We don't know if he was Jewish. Jewish, We assume he was there for the festival, but nonetheless, there he was. And we hear about him, and what we know is eventually he would become a disciple, a mover, a shaker, filled with the Holy Spirit in the books of, book of Acts. But at this point, he's just a man on the side of the road with his two sons, And he's not asked, he's told, pick up this cross, carry it. He had to do it or the soldiers would strike him down. That was the law. There was no choice to be made there. 
And I wonder about these soldiers, very of the world in this moment. Are they just impatient? Can they not get Jesus to the cross fast enough to die? Or is it actually darker than that? Do they see how weak the Christ is and want to make sure they can prolong the suffering on the cross even more? So let's give them a break so it lasts a little longer. Was Simon reluctant to help? We don't know. Did he feel compassion for this bloodied, unrecognizable man before him? I know I would. And like Simon, we often encounter the worst of life's circumstances. We feel as if this is it. This is the end. There's no where to go from here. This is the final journey. And no matter the situation, the death of a loved one, conversations of divorce, or even worse, seeing the mass disease and wars that happen across the globe, we feel often as if this is it. Is this what it means to follow Jesus? Do my intended acts of compassion, whether I mean it to or not, just prolong the suffering is what I'm doing just prolonging the suffering of Christ. We ask ourselves, why, God, is this happening as we see and witness to the scenes of the cross? But take note, this is where Jesus interrupts the women who are wailing, the women who are crying, asking these same questions that we ask today in the midst of our suffering and frustrations. And Jesus says, do not weep for me. But weep for yourselves and for your children. Jesus here is pointing out something that we often miss on this day and many days of following Christ. As painful and as sorrowful as it is to watch Jesus carry this burden, it's good for us. I believe that's why Jesus makes mention of the cross weeks, months, maybe even years before this happens. In Luke 9, 23, he accounts Christ's words of saying, if any of you want to be my followers, you must forget about yourself. You must take up your cross every day and follow me. On the road to redemption, the interaction of Simon, of Cyrene, is is evidence that we must be ready to do this. We must be ready to take up the cross. We don't get to choose when we take our final journeys. We don't get to choose when we face uncertainty, suffering, despair, or just a change. In those situations, and especially in our misery, where you wish God would take away the pain but it's there anyway. It's being laid on your back just as the cross was laid on Simon's back. We still have a choice. Do we carry our own cross of burden, of grief, of woe is me? Or do we come up under the yoke of Jesus? The perfect one who's nailed to the cross. My friends, today we grieve at pain, but let it not be for Christ, but for the regret of not living the lives that we've been called to live. And then look to the cross, because it's there. Just as the Israelites looked to the serpent on the pole in the wilderness, it's there to remind us that this is a symbol of hope and healing. The sadness we feel should not be for him, but for us. It's not fair. Nobody ever said it would be. Like Simon, you may be just coming along, not even sure if you want to be a disciple, not sure if you even want to be this committed, and yet the cross is laid on your back. Or you may be like Mother Mary, who probably knew since the birth that something like this was coming. 
and yet treasured all these things in her heart. Whenever, wherever, however, we must be ready to carry his cross. And we take peace there. Because when we come up under his yoke, well, hear Christ's word himself. He says, take the yoke I give you. Put it on your shoulders and learn from me. I am gentle and humble, and this is important. You will find rest. But he doesn't stop there. Jesus says, this yoke, this yoke is easy to bear, and this burden is light. Today, we may shed a tear, but don't cry for him. Put down your burdens. Put down your heavy cross of grief and self-centeredness. Instead, take up the cross that Jesus carries. You know, the destination of the cross is Golgotha. The difference between our cross and Jesus is when we get there, he's the one who's nailed to it. But if we keep our own cross, we'll end up nailing ourselves to it. And that is a spiritual death none of us want to face. Instead, we accept that this is the final journey. We join Jesus under his cross, which the whole world is screaming at us, that's not right. That's death. That's the end. When we know that as we look at this final journey, as we come up under the yoke of Jesus, we know this is just the beginning. Amen? Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. It's hard. Because it's not fair, and we know it. We look from all sorts of different perspectives and see how unfair it is. And today my prayer is, Jesus, that as we examine our own lives and the ways that we have striven to follow you or have fallen off of following you, we don't ask for a literal cross to be placed on our back, but instead... We really do want to set aside all of those things that hurt us, that hold us back from following you. Jesus, in just a few hours, we will be reminded of how you were laid in the tomb and rested. We will remember your words of how you said, it is finished. So today too, Jesus, I pray that we would find rest for our souls, that we would remember these acts not as pain and suffering, but as the beautiful and wonderful gift that only you could give, and that really, truly is the only gift we will ever need in this world. We thank you for Good Friday. We thank you for the spirit of worship that is among us today. And we ask and pray this all in your son's holy name, Jesus. Amen.